In our society, there are really two main ways of looking at the world. The first is optimism. The optimist looks out on the world and sees progress. The optimist sees, yes, there are some problems in our world, but over time, human beings will naturally figure out how to solve those problems. The other way of looking at the world is pessimism. The pessimist doesn't think history means anything except the constant struggle and conflict and competition. So the optimist sees no evil, the pessimist sees nothing but evil. But the prayer of Jesus teaches us a quite different way of looking at the world. Jesus prays, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He acknowledges the presence of evil in our lives. He acknowledges that things are not right with the world. He acknowledges that there are things in this world that are bent out of shape that there are things wrong with our lives that no amount of human effort could ever make right. So there's no optimism in this prayer, but there's no pessimism either. Jesus doesn't just say that there's evil in the world. He prays, deliver us from evil. Jesus acknowledges that there is a deliverer who is attentive to the cry of the human heart. He acknowledges that there is a deliverer who lifts the burden of the oppressed. He acknowledges that evil will not have the last word in our lives. He acknowledges that injustice will not have the last word in our world. As Martin Luther King Jr. used to say, the arc of the moral universe bends towards justice. The Bible's view of the human condition is neither optimistic nor pessimistic. The Bible's view could be summed up in the prayer of the psalmist, How long, O Lord, how long? There are times in all our lives when we feel hurt by the crushing presence of evil. And it's natural at those times that we should cry to God, deliver us from evil. But we don't feel that way every single day. And yet we pray the prayer of Jesus every day. Why is that? I think it's because in this prayer, we're not just praying our own individual prayer, but we're uniting our voices in solidarity with all those who cry to God for deliverance from evil. Today in our world, followers of Christ suffer persecution for their faith, and we unite our voices to theirs and pray, deliver us from evil. Today, uh, the multitudes of the poor are exploited for the benefit of the powerful few, and we unite our voices to theirs and cry, deliver us from evil. Today, the widow and the orphan and the refugee are placed in detention and we unite our voice to theirs and cry, deliver us from evil. Today, children are sold into slavery all around this world and we join our voices with their cry, deliver us from evil. And whenever we unite our voices in this prayer, it's as if we hear another voice breaking through. That's the voice of Jesus himself, for it is his prayer. And ultimately, it is always Jesus who prays this prayer. Jesus cries out through one body to the Father, deliver us from evil. In this prayer, there is neither the false comfort of optimism, nor the false despair of pessimism. When we join our voices with the voice of Jesus, we catch a glimpse of the world as it really is, vulnerable, hurt, threatened, yet poised on the brink of redemption.